Hi there and welcome to this introductory video on using the wave interference FET simulation. So what I'm going to do is just run through how um, we can utilize the uh, simulation, what are the key areas of the simulation and then you can use those skills to apply them to the activity um, which you're going to be working through. So when you click on the link on the activity it will take you straight to the um, simulation and then basically you can, um, you'll get a screen that will look something in the region of this. Now these, this is a great um, simulation for looking at any form of wave interference. So what are the key things that we've got there? Well we can look at whether we're doing interference with respect to water, whether we're looking at sound, or whether we're looking at light. So by toggling through the tops of these um, areas we can look at whether we're going to be dealing with sound, light, or water. So what we then can then notice is we've then got um, a frequency table down here which we can move up and down which will change the speed at which things work. We also have an amplitude um, button that we can, we can move around there as well. Now when we look on this side what have we got? Well at the moment I've got one drip going on obviously this is we're looking for water but then I can set up two drips. Now when we set up two drips we can then move the space between those various drips depending on what, how we want to um, show it. I've also found that um, if you click on this um, button here it allows you to minimize or increase the size of the screen that you happen to be looking at. Notice that if you're going to be using some of the programs like Show Graph you'll have to be in the minimized version. Now you can also add barriers but for this activity um, we're not going to be using any of those so you don't need to um, don't need to utilize it. We also have an, um, a detector which basically has a um, cable here and a little uh, crosshair which allows you to look at what's going on with respect to that detector at various points on the graph. Now you can go through a side view but again we're not going to be utilizing that we might use that later on. So pushing it back in. We also have a measuring tape that allows us to move from a specific point. Notice it's only um, this point which allows you to move. Uh, this one here, you can only move it up and down. You can't, you can't toggle it like we've got there. And that allows you to do some measurements, which is quite useful. Okay, so uh, I'll just get rid of the measuring tape. Um, let's have a look at sound. Similar sort of thing with sound. You've got two speakers, so you can put your two speakers in there and um, you can obviously change the spacing of those speakers as well. Um, if you wanted you could have sound and we can turn that off or turn the, turn the sound up and, and we can start playing what happens with, um, with the sound. Again we've got a frequency and an amplitude that we might utilize. Also what we'll notice is, in fact I'm just going to increase the frequency just a wee bit to get a pattern. We can also show a graph and that graph will um, look at what's going on at various points. Now, when you look at your graph, um, you have, it basically relates to this hatched black line that you can see here. By moving that hatched back line, black line up and down, just uh, you need to get the finger, get your finger pointed like that. You can then move up and down, and then what it will do is show you what is happening along that line with respect to the amplitudes of the waves etc etc so that's really quite a useful tool now if we move on to light here i've already got um, two light sources we can change the color of the um, light and obviously change the wavelength which is going to have an effect if i'm just going to close those quickly and open that up so you can see what happens when you've got maybe blue or you can see what's happening if i'm looking at a green light, etc, etc. Now, what's really good about this is it then shows you a screen, and this is where it comes into fringe patterns. So we can get a, a screen which is generated, and we see what's going to be happening if we were to put a screen vertically along those um, light patterns. It then, if we go to the intensity graph here, it then allows us to look at what is the amplitude of the waves which are generated on each of those um, on those curves. Now, I'll just minimize everything. You also have down here show a graph. So if I then put in show screen, intensity graph, 
and then show the graph down the bottom, it shows me again what is happening with the um, waves as I'm moving along this hatchback black line. And there's an exercise in the activity that requires you to look at what's happening uh, along those lines and it's, it links quite nicely to superpositioning. So that basically works with the majority of the, um, uh, the simulation. Going back to the measuring tape, this is used in um, one of the activities where we're going to be looking at path difference. So if you're on the um, path difference activity, then this is where you'll be using your measuring tape. So uh, hopefully you get an idea how to use it. Notice that with light, we're looking at nanometers because that's the wavelength um, and range of, of light in order to work um, uh, correctly by splitting that light apart. And if you've done anything on diffraction gratings, then um, you'll understand that they've got to be very small spaces between the light sources. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I can't think of anything else that um, you'll utilize bar the different types of things that I've gone through down here. The barriers and the slits we won't use up to this point. Um, we'll, we'll do that to more, in more detail in a, in a further activity. Okay, well, I, I hope you found that useful. So go on to the activity and start working through it. And I suggest you have a bit of a play with each of the simulations first so you know what's going on, and then you can complete the activity um, fairly nicely. Okay, well, thank you for joining me, and uh, I look forward to meeting you again. Bye for now.